Matt. Katie, thanks. Two of the planes that were hijacked and then intentionally crashed took off from Logan International Airport in Boston. NBC's Chris Hansen is in Boston this morning. Chris, it appears that if there are any breaks in the investigation in the early stages, they've come there in Boston. That's exactly right, Matt. Good morning. In many terrorism cases, it appears the first and most significant leads come from vehicles that were either involved in the crime or abandoned after the crime, and such appears to be the case here. Yesterday, law enforcement authorities here in Boston got a call from a man who had flown out on a different flight, got to his location, saw what happened at the World Trade Center, and something clicked in his mind. He said that uh, he had an altercation in one of the parking garages here with, with a couple of, as he described, Arabic men. And he described the car that they had. When law enforcement authorities checked out that car, they looked inside and they saw flight manuals in Arabic. They were then able to connect that car, a four-door Mitsubishi that was rented apparently right here at the airport, to two individuals, brothers who had United Arab Emirates passports. One of those brothers is an experienced pilot. Now, I can also tell you from here today that they are looking at the possibility of three more of the hijackers uh, coming in from Canada and then flying from Portland, Maine, here to Logan Airport uh, yesterday morning. Uh, law enforcement authorities and uh, FBI sources now confirm that they believe the five of these people were actually some of the hijackers who took over those planes that left uh, Boston yesterday, Matt. Hey, Chris, let me ask you something, and if this is outside your area here, I apologize, but I've also heard reports that based on the names they think uh, were on those, those planes that police are, are searching some areas in Florida, in, in Broward County. They are. Tell me about that. Well, uh, you know, it's been a little hard to get the Florida information here in Boston, but I can confirm and, and, and tell you that uh, based upon one of those names and because it was familiar to federal investigators, um, they did execute some search warrants in Florida. To the best of my knowledge, they have not found uh, anything too significant and are taking a look at perhaps uh, a second residence. Uh, it's now believed that the, the person, the target, may have moved. Right. But uh, they do believe that he uh, died in uh, in the crash. Chris, uh, obviously this is a breach of security at Logan Airport where two of the planes were hijacked. Uh, is there, is that an airport where they take pictures of everyone who passes through security? You know, you would think that that would be a good possibility, but at a briefing here yesterday, the airport authority said uh, thus far uh, they do not believe anything of significance was captured on any security cameras in the airport. They have had some problems with security here in the past. There have been some fines. Logan Airport authorities have defended their airport as being as safe as any other. But there have been problems here in the past. And you have to ask yourself, you know, was this just a matter of the terrorists being very clever, being able to sneak uh, one of these non-metallic knives on board, as we've heard? Or was there a huge breach here? Were people not paying attention at the, uh, at the security post? Yeah, it's the last line of defense at any airport. But specifically, my question is, is there a video camera pointed at the security pass-through or checkpoints that would record everybody who gets onto a plane there that day? You know, that's a good question, Matt. We were led to believe yesterday that, in fact, there was not. Uh, but we're going to have a briefing here in the next uh, couple of hours with airport authorities as well as uh, perhaps uh, federal law enforcement people, and uh, uh, we'll certainly dig into that. All right, Chris Hansen in Boston this morning. Chris, thank you very much. It was devastating enough.